recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago and beyond. This is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome mad. Today is Thursday, May the 2nd, and it is contempt of court week. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Man, do you think he's... I know a lot of people are saying that nothing's really going to happen, but he has been fined. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that nothing is going to happen. I think Judge Mershon, I may be mispronouncing that, so forgive me if I am. I think that guy has basically said, we are not fucking around. I love that guy's ramen noodles, but <laughs> the best, the best ramen noodles. Actually, Juan not, Michon, actually ramen noodles. not the best ramen noodles. The what best is the best ramen noodles? You know, I like Ichiban. I think those are good. Those and, are good. And I also like the the I got a I got a set of Korean ones from Costco that are just outstanding. They're oh like, really? They take longer to cook and they're spicy no, hot. I only have thirty seconds. Each. <laughs> like four and a half minutes to cook instead of thirty. I want no. I instead of three seconds. minutes to like four and a half minutes because it's a bigger block. Right. That's good. Yeah. So like I think that Judge Mershon has shown that he is taking a hard line. That he is. I think he's willing to throw him in jail. I think he is really genuinely willing to do that. Um, I think he like the nine thousand dollar fine. I think is just a warning shot. Sure, yeah. And he's shot like over saying, the bow. Right. Do not actually fuck with me. I think it's also really telling that Trump didn't make it ten days without having the gag order both imposed right. and then after imposed that gag order to be uh, right. you know violated. Yeah. And and he's I think he's trying to test the limits too. The best thing for Trump, if I'm Trump, I want to get put in jail. If I'm Trump, this is a no-win situation yeah. for the judge. If I'm Trump, I'm going to push, push, push gently, right? In ways that like don't look super overt to people that will agree with me. I'm going to look like I'm asserting my fucking First Amendment rights or whatever stupid bullshit I'm lying about. But I want to get thrown in jail. Because sure. if I get thrown in jail, those assholes on the right are going to rally to him. And they're going to shit money into his coffers. That's totally true. I think that that $9,000 is the best $9,000 he ever spent. Oh my God. It's so He fundraised awesome. off it. Yeah, it's so awesome. Free publicity. It turns itself into a, into a marketing email that you can send out. Yep. It turns itself into a headline that he can then share with people on his truths and he can truth out some shit to people to be like, look at how oppressed I am. Look at how much they're trying to silence me. They're trying to silence... It, it, that, that money paid for itself tenfold. Easy. Oh, yeah. Easy. Well, and like, I know that there was an argument that was being made that like, oh, you know, like Trump is bound by this gag order, but, you know, these various witnesses, Cohen and, and you know, by, they can all say whatever they want. And it's like, well, yeah, they're not the fucking defendant. Sure. They're a witness. Like the judge can't actually enjoin a witness against speech. They, it can only enjoin the defendant. So like he has no power. The judge even acknowledged he had no power. And then like when they were arguing it, because they're trying to get the gag order thrown out, when they were arguing it, he's like, well, wait, the gag order isn't you can't say anything. The gag order is you can't badmouth the judge, the prosecutor, the jury, or their families. Yeah, That's like a pretty low bar. Sure. You can respond to Joe Biden, man. No one is saying yeah. you can't fucking respond to Joe Biden. But the reason why he wants to paint the reason why he's even stepping across that line, the reason why he's doing it is because then he can say, they don't want me to say anything. Exactly. They don't want me to say anything about Joe Biden. They don't want, because the moment he creates an infraction and transgresses, they then he says, everything I say is a transgression. And they are trying to silence me. This is a deep state thing. Yep. And so it's just, it's it. I mean, it writes itself. It's it easy. This is a great, this is really the, Last best tactic, I think, yeah. for Trump to weaponize, and he's smart enough to do it, or he's tactical sure. enough, I should say, to do it. I don't want to give him credit yeah. for being smart, but I'll give him credit for being tactical. I mean, there's some tactics in it, yeah, sure. Right. So, and I, th but I think those things are different. So, like, I'll give him, I'll give him credit for being tactical. If I was the judge, I would not throw him in jail. No, I would fine him. Yeah. Every time, I would fine him. Yeah. Because the fine is a message um, of its own, and even though like it might not have any teeth he can't really turn around and use it as the big cudgel. Right, right. Really? You're gonna take me out? You're not even wearing pants. No, Fire Lord Ozai. You're not wearing pants. <laughs> ah! No! My royal parts are showing! Ah! 
So the story comes from Salon. Number of different devices fail to keep Trump awake in Speaking court. Speaking of a cudgel, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> now, that puts awesome. you to sleep. It'd be awesome if someone just stand behind him and just swatted him with a newspaper <laughs> every time he started to nod off and just fucking give him one. I whack. <laughs> Right poof, upside poof. the head. <laughs> the reason why I chose like this story yeah. is because, uh, Tom, do you have devices that okay. you use to make sure that you don't fall asleep or you will wake up? Oh, that I wake times? up. I have a Pavlock <laughs> shock watch. Is it called a Pavlock? Pavlock like Tom? Pavlovian? Yeah. And do you salivate? <laughs> it like makes you salivate when you put it on. Well, here's what's supposed to it, happen. It like rings here's a bell, and Tom's like, "Where's dinner?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Tom's he's <laughs> pawing at fucking cabinets around his house. And I don't even know why. Like, I just have this urge. I just have this anybody urge. Anybody who walks in the kitchen, he's rubbing up against their legs. <laughs> uh, so I have this shock watch because I was, I was having a harder and harder time waking up. What a so, fucking life you lead. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was just having a hard time controlling myself around chocolate. So I got one of those fire hoses that they use <laughs> to fucking shoot at boats, you know? And I had it installed in the kitchen. So every time I go in to make a thing a quick, my wife shoots me with a fire hose. <laughs> you know, there does come a point, Cecil, where you realize you are training yourself like a dog. <laughs> You know, you have your own shock collar, and that you're losing that training. <laughs> That's the other thing is I realize it because I'll share with you like how bad this is. It's so funny. <coughs> so like, I wake up before my wife wakes up because I wake up very early in the morning. I wake up five thirty with the kids, so I wake up at five thirty in the morning. But I have some problems with sleep, so I'm not getting very much of it. Yeah, yeah. So five thirty rolls around, and what I had been doing was wearing a fitness watch that vibrated, but as like the sleep deficit builds up. The, the vibrating just gets incorporated into my dreams. So then I have these dreams where I'm running around looking for the goddamn vibrating watch to turn it off. But it's on. <laughs> but it's on and I'm asleep and I then I oversleep. Sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, fuck, I can't oversleep all the time. Like, this is like unacceptable. I'm a grown up. I got to get up when I have responsibilities. So I was looking online for like solutions that were both quiet and I find I stumble across this padlock sure. watch. Now, here's what it's supposed to do though. This is the best part. It is so unpleasant that like ultimately what is supposed to happen is that your body will develop a circadian rhythm that wakes you up before the watch shocks you. Sure. So before it shocks you, it does vibrate for like, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. It vibrates. And then the shocking starts, right? And then it wakes you up and then you have to solve a puzzle before it stops shocking you. <laughs> solve a puzzle angry? <laughs> At 5.30 in the morning, I'm getting shocked with electrical shocks on my wrist, trying to like solve it like there, and there's different puzzles every time. tired angry tom solving puzzles it's something else wow, dude that is it's something else wow but it's still me so here's what started happening i do not wake up before the shocking starts no, of course literally not. ever no. my body has not developed the circadian rhythm of hey we're gonna start waking up and build a thing so we don't get shocked my body's like you know what we can probably do Start incorporating being shocked into our dreams. No kidding. Now, I can't do it for very long. Thank God. But if I, my watch is going off at 530, any number of times it's been 538 and I've been getting shocked intermittently every 15 seconds by this fucking watch for minutes. And your hand and has been in an electric fence or and something. And yeah, like for real. I'm like dreaming. Usually I'm dreaming of trying to turn off my goddamn shock watch because it hurts. <laughs> dreaming of doing the thing you should be doing. Oh my God, Tom. So it, it's, yeah, it's it's something else. I, I wake up at least 10 minutes before the alarm every single day. I don't even understand and the words and, and then I shut my phone off. I shut the alarm off. My alarm rarely goes off. It's maybe once every six months I'll sleep past the other thing too is when I change the clocks, when the clocks get changed, yeah. I'm still 10 minutes from when that sets off. Yo, so even with a time change, I my body is like, oh no, yeah, you're gotta get up an hour early and and how? I don't know. It just does I don't it. Understand. This like, fucking thing's normally here's the thing. It's shitty for everything else. <laughs> okay. My body is shitty for everything else, Tom. The only thing it does right is that. That's the only, it also knows where I'm going. Those are the two things I can do. <laughs> That's I, it. I, I can know say, when to be yeah. there and I'll be there on time because yes. I won't miss it. You'll never And get lost. I will get there because yeah. I won't get lost. 
Those are the two things that this piece of meat up, the rest of it is all trash. It's all garbage. When I was in college and I was like working full time, going to school full time and I was sleeping very little. And so I used to carry in my car a pair of pliers to pinch myself with while I was driving. <laughs> Tom's, Tom puts his foot down to hit the gas and there's a bear trap down there. Because <laughs> it would scare me. I'd be driving like late at night and I would have very little sleep. I'd be so tired. And I, and you get that like road hypnosis that like makes you sleepy. Tom, Tom why are there fish hooks on your, on your steering wheel? What is happening? What is happening in your life where so, that's necessary? That was my solution is I would just take this pair of pliers and I would just pinch myself real hard. And it'd be like, oh, that fucking sucks. And it would keep me awake for a little Passenger while. seat. He's like, hey, can you open the <laughs> open the glove box? Get out that pipe wrench and hit me in the legs with it. <laughs> you know, you ever like so tired you pull out one of your teeth to stay awake? <laughs> <laughs> your life is something else, dude. Uh, but anyway, so Trump yeah. is Trump is stay is trying to stay awake in court, and they made his whole story about it. I think it's funny. That's I think great. what I think is funny is they're making stories about him not being like sleeping in there. They're making stories about him pooping in there. It's like <laughs> <laughs> All these stories, and I don't know, you know, I mean, like, they're just stories, right? Yeah. This one may be more realistic than the other ones because oh, you can at least see his eyes. There's been a lot of reporting eyes, about like, him being asleep. About him napping. I listened to a news podcast, and I don't remember which one, but it's not like a nothing burger news show. It was like either The Daily or What Next or The Journal. It was something like that where one of the reporters says he brought binoculars so he could watch Trump and see when he falls asleep and count the amount of time he's Amazing. asleep. Amazing. They, another podcast described him as, they said, I don't want to opine on whether or not he's sleeping, but he certainly does appear, at the very least, meditative. <laughs> Is he? Re <laughs> he's, he's resting his eyes. <laughs> a, my, my dad used to say, I'm just going to rest I'm going to rest my eyes. eyes. That means sleeping. I'll tell you what, Zach. There are so many people that try to do, but you see the failed Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Baldwin comes out on SNL, which used to be a lot funnier back Holy in the day with shit. Chevy Chase. But Baldwin goes like this. He goes... We've got a great show. <laughs> boopity, 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 boop. I don't do that. I never say boopity, boo. All right, this story comes from the AP. Arizona indicts 18 in election interference case, including Giuliani and Meadows. Not Trump. He is co-conspirator whatever. Yes, he's an unnamed co-conspirator. Co co so he's, he's not part of this. Trump. But it's definitely Trump. It's definitely Trump. And uh, a couple of these people haven't actually been served yet, but you know it's Giuliani and you know it's Meadows because they list their occupations. That's so you know fucking delightful. Are. But there's more people that are uh, that are and and if you read this article, you see that the AG down there is being attacked as weaponizing the the Attorney General's office to go after people. Not you know they're they're not trying to they they are trying to make it look like. This is a weapon of the deep state. They're doing it every yeah. way they can, every single time, every jurisdiction. That's how they're trying to paint this. That's how the right is trying to paint this. But like the false elector scheme should be criminally prosecuted in every single state Agreed. where false electors were chosen. This is fuck around and find out mm -hmm. time. Yeah. We can't allow, because like, the thing is that it, I think that what, what maybe people are missing sometimes when they're dismissive of this is, my God, what if it had worked? If this had worked, regardless of the insurrection, if the false elector scheme had worked, that would have dismantled our democracy. Because of what it would mean is that your vote did not count. Well, and, and, and if they were to get past, slip this one past the goalie, and Trump was able to stay in. It's a playbook. And it, then suddenly, I guarantee you, there's never a moment that person's out of office or anybody else at that point is out of office because every single person would follow the, whoever controls that government is going to be the one who controls that government from this point on. Why At that point, the, the, the right wants to talk so much shit about, you know, integrity of elections, election integrity. And, you know, we got to make sure that like these people can't, you know, show up to vote illegal or vote, you know, 700 times or whatever nonsense, fairy tale, yeah. unicorn, ballot pushing bullshit they make up. And the whole time, all the work that they're doing over here while they're making all their, you know, noise over on this side of everything, all the work that they're doing over here, that work is intentionally designed to rid us of our democracy, to strip away our right to vote, to reduce voter uh, turnout to make it more difficult for people of color to show up to vote. And then if it still doesn't go their way, well, we'll just get a new slate of electors. We'll just disregard the vote in its entirety. That's what we'll do. 
And all of this is an obfuscation and distraction. All this like voter in, you know, integrity shit. That's just like pay no attention to the man behind the mirror stuff. They are absolutely going to destroy. So like we got to prosecute it because if we don't, we will embolden it. Every single time that they get away with a little bit, they're going to push more. Yeah, Give man. them an inch, they're going to take a mile. That's just how it's going to work. They've been getting away with election interference for decades through gerrymandering. Yes. They've been doing it for years, right? They've been closing down black polling stations, people of color polling stations. They've been closing down poor people closed po polling stations throughout all this country it's been happening, right? They do Absolutely. it whenever they get an opportunity. They've been getting away with it through not allowing people to have opportunities to vote past certain times, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like, look at how vilified vote by mail and vote early is. Look at how hard it is to do those things. Look at how difficult we make it to do those things. They make it so that if you're if you work like a nine to five job, you make it makes it makes it real, real hard for you to vote that day. I mean, remember when they like made it impossible or made it illegal? I don't remember where, but they made it illegal to give people water yeah. that were standing in line. Yeah. So the, the the strategy then was to create situations where the lines were long and the opportunity the the, the 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 comfort level of staying in those lines was nearly impossible. Yeah. You know, they make a really long line, reduce the amount of polling places, kick all those people that want to vote to a shorter number of places, make the line really long, make it really uncomfortable, make it really difficult. That's all voter suppression. Yeah. That's just straight up fucking voter suppression. They're talking about that. We gotta prosecute it. Yeah. We gotta prosecute it. Yo, what's in this shit, man? Mostly Maui Wowie, man. Yeah? But it's got some Labrador in it. What's Labrador? It's dog shit. What? Yeah, my dog ate my stash, man. I had it on the table and the little motherfucker ate it, man. Yeah? So I had to follow him around the little baggie for three days before I got it back. It really blew the dog's mind. Sister comes from NBC News. Biden administration plans to reclassify marijuana, easing restrictions nationwide. Cannabis is currently classified along with drugs like heroin and LSD. The administration is expected to reschedule it in a category that includes steroids and Tylenol 3, Tylenol with Cody. Wow. It's That's a big huge. Deal. That's huge. I, you know, I feel like, and they're saying that this is going to take a little bit, but it's really feels like it's going to coincide with the, with the election where this sort of stuff is good because they're saying it's going to take 90 days and then other right, stuff right, to sort right. of actually make it go through. But I feel like this is a great step in the right direction for the government. Uh, and it shows that across the country that there is less of a pressure to for some of these states that still have yep. marijuana as illegal. And then the other thing it does is open up research in a huge way for people to start researching it. And there's a lot of different studies that can be done and you can find out for real, you know, a lot of the things that people claim, you can start really testing a lot of these medical marijuana things. That's right. And big, big, air, big research stuff can happen because it's no longer in that schedule that makes it so it's like classified as dangerous. Yeah, so the, the schedule one drugs, if you're if your drug is classified as a schedule one drug, it's essentially been declared as entirely off limits. Yeah. For it's all, useless. almost they all think uses. it's useless. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's just it's just dangerous. It's yeah. just problematic. Yeah. I think it's interesting, by the way, that LSD is in yeah, that I, I mean, bucket. That's yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah. You know, like like LSD is not. I mean, I'm not a proponent or detractor of any of these stuff, but like LSD to like say like, oh, that's the same as meth or heroin. Like, I well, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But they're putting they're putting marijuana in the same category as, you know, like they said, Tylenol 3 or anabolic steroids, things along those lines, which while still technically restricted, sure, these are not, you know, drugs that have no use case, mm -hmm. right? Anabolic steroids have a use case. Tylenol 3, you can get a prescription for it. You can abuse both of these things. You can use them without a prescription. Right. Yeah. Those things are illegal. But it also means, I think, that essentially no federal resources or very limited federal resources will be aimed at trying to crack down on grow operations, yeah. sellers, you know, essentially it's not going to decriminalize it across the United States. But like, if you're the DEA, you're going to say, all right, we're not going to worry about spending a lot of our resources yeah. on this anymore. It's no longer in the same schedule. We're going to work on, you know, the fentanyl problem sure. or, you know, other problems that are, that are just as big. And also there's a tax change too. 
So yes, when there's deal. when there's uh, when it goes down in scheduling, then there's an opportunity for for people who are in this business now, the cannabis business now, to not be as heavily penalized by the government for certain things that they do, and there's a tax thing that happens yeah. because of it, and so. Do you know what I didn't read when I listened to I listened to a show about this uh, story and then I read this article and I guess maybe I missed it if it's out there or, or I didn't read anything about it or hear anything about it. But right now, one of the big problems with the legal marijuana industry is that it is still federally illegal, which means that you can't deposit your funds. Yeah, in I had a bank. heard that. I had heard that. I wonder if this changes it. I wonder if this does allow them to use yeah. the banking system in the traditional way. Which should be, would be a benefit to them because like there was a huge cash business. Yeah, it's a really dangerous yeah, business. Dangerous business. It's a really, really dangerous yeah. business. And I think, and I could be wrong about this, but I I, I believe you can't use credit cards. Um, oh, so if you go into- If go, you go into a dispensary, it's it's debit only. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because they can't, they're, they're restricted because of the makes nature sense. of their business. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Besides yourself, what do you really love? I love a lot of different things. Oh yeah? Well, like what? Little puppy dogs? Yeah. Fat kids in bicycle shorts? Yes. Butterscotch animas? Mm, unusual for me, but I love that. Then there's the chicken dance song. Which I love. It's a very bedroom sexy song. Mm. Uh-huh. This story's from The Guardian. Christy Nome, am I pronouncing that right? It could be. I don't Who know. Who cares? Christy Nome, <laughs> dogged by poor polling amid fallout from tale of killing puppy. Oh. Uh, so here's the, here's the story. This is South Dakota governor... Uh, this is a person who, I don't want to put this on the big screen because it, I think this is sort of emblematic of what Trump sort of wants in a, in, in a lot of his allies is like a tanned woman who is like a, like a sort of rabid conservative. I think that that really fits the bill of what he wants as someone who is in his orbit. Can we briefly acknowledge from this photo that like she may have killed that puppy with the fucking guns that are oh, yeah. her arms. She's got some fucking diesel guns. Like, I don't know if you guys have yeah. tickets to this <laughs> motherfucking gun well, show. she certainly has Christy other Nome guns, is too. flexing. I will say this, too. She's this story jacked. Is, this story is her uh, having a, a, a four, this is a 14-month-old dog. This is a puppy. This yes. is not it's a, a dog, puppy. right? This is a puppy. And the dog was acting up. It bit somebody, and it also like killed a chicken on her property and it's a pointer. It's a dog that she's using for hunting, probably sucked at that and probably wasn't learning. And it probably was a, a, a bit of a handful. She took it to a gravel pit and she killed it. She, yeah. she shot it with a shotgun. She killed it. Horrible way for an animal to die. Yeah. Genuinely terrible thing to do to something. Not, sure. a, not a good thing. No. Right. And, 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 you know, the part of me wonders too, you know, like when you go to hunt a, a buck or a doe, you mm -hmm. use, Buckshot. You use a rifled slug most of the time, you, or you use buckshot. Which I know. Is big. I thought about this too. Like my thought is, if she's mad at it while she was hunting, say duck, she's killing it with a shotgun, and that shotgun has shot in it, not a not a slug. That's a different way to kill something. That is something that is a little more problematic, and certainly, definitely, might could have had the dog linger more with a shot to it. That uh, that's uh, that's the first thing that popped through my head. But I will say this. I don't know a lot about dogs, right? I'm not a dog. Right. I, I haven't been a dog person for a long time, but I did research dogs quite a bit when I bought a house because I was thinking about getting a dog. Almost everything I read said that dogs for about two years are puppies and yeah. they and they act like puppies and they chew shit up and they run around and they, you know, like some dogs have to be crated for a long time because they just, they don't break they're out of that. They're a lot of work. They're, they, they're, they're not like a cat. You don't, they walk in your house and be like, there's the box to shit in, there's the food. And they're just like, cool, I live here now. <laughs> right. That's yeah. not how it works. No, it's Like a so dog different. is like, I am going to eat the floor. Right. And then they eat the floor. And then you're like, please don't eat the floor. And then they're like, cool, I'll move out of the door jam. Yep. And then they'll eat yep. the door jam. And then they'll eat all your shoes. And then they'll pee everywhere. And then they'll run around the house literally for no reason for like 30 straight minutes. And because they're <laughs> because they're babies. Yes, right. Because yep. they're still fucking babies. Yep. And they're babies for a long time. And if you if you sign up to take care of a baby and you can't handle it, that's not the baby's fault. No, man. That's yeah. fucking your fault. And to murder an animal that is clearly a baby for acting like a baby is a shitty, horrible thing to do and human beings should judge you as a bad person for doing yeah. it. Yeah, and I, I want to also 
point out something else that I don't think it's talked about enough about the story. She's proud of this story. Yeah, she's not, and she's not backing away from it. Right. She's, but she, it's not like the story came out about No, her. she wrote about it. She wrote it in her own book. This is a point of pride for her. This is something about her, an anecdote that she's choosing to tell sure. about herself yeah. to tell you what kind of character she has. Nobody waterboarded her to get this out right. of her. Exactly. So this is somebody who is showing you that they are proud of their lack of empathy. They are as a point of, of pride that they want to show the world, this is who I am, world. I am somebody who, when I don't like the way things are going, problem solves it with the least empathetic possible option, right? She didn't rehome the dog. She didn't like hire an outside trainer to work with her and the dog. Again. She didn't problem solve it in any other way. What she did was the fastest, least empathetic, most expedient and selfish thing. And then that solution for her is a point of pride. Sure. Holy shit. Does that tell me about you? Yeah. Like when you tell me a story, an anecdote about yourself, you're telling me something about like what you're proud of about you or what you think is fun and funny about you. If you tell me a story about the time that you fucking killed a 14 month old puppy because you couldn't figure out how to problem solve your way past this problem, you're telling me something about you're telling on yourself yeah. in a huge way. And what does it say about the electorate, right? So there's two sides of the electorate. Clearly there's a group of people out there who think this is a horrible story. This is a horror story. Yeah. This is something that you should be ashamed of. This is something that you should have never done. And in fact, people shouldn't trust you with other things if this is how you act, right? There's a lot of people out there who think that. But then there's a whole other group of people out there that are like, that's how you get her done. Right, yeah. There's a whole group of people in the world who can operate a voting booth and they all think, yepers, yep. you should be shooting it. Like, okay, man. You take in a pet, you sign on to be responsible sure. for that pet. And I do think that like, there's something to be said for it is an untenable situation to have a dog that bites. A dog that bites is a dangerous no, thing to absolutely. have. Absolutely. There are other ways to problem solve this thing through though, right? Like I said, you can rehome that dog with somebody that has different expectations or different time that they can spend. Rehoming is not a bad thing. Sometimes animals need to be rehomed. You know, you can have somebody have a, like I said, you can hire a trainer that specializes in, in problematic animals. This is whatever. not a lady without means. She's got resources, right? The last possible resort, the thing that we should do the very last when there is when there are literally no other options is to euthanize an animal. She didn't even euthanize no. it. She took it to a fucking gravel pit and she shot at herself because she's of that rootin' tootin', fixing problems, making hard choices, doing it myself. You know, like, again, like that that bloodlust and that lack of empathy. These should be marks against our character. Sure. Yeah. This should be like a point of shame where like the only way someone's going to find out I did that is if they pry that story from my fucking corpse. Yeah. You wouldn't put it in your book. There's no right. reason to put it in your book and to put it on display and to tell everybody this is who I am. Because what you're, and, and make no mistake, this is a calculated story yes. told by her, told by a person who's either in government or is wanting to run for government to say, this is how I problem solve. And like I said, there's a selection of the electorate that that appeals to. Yes, 100%. And like, I am glad that this has essentially ruined her career. This appears to have it, damaged I mean, her career. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like there's any chance that she would be the, the vice, vice president pick. at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For a while, she was considered maybe. Yeah. But it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case. Fucking good. Yeah. I, this I, is a gross yeah. person. Los locos kick your ass. Los locos kick your face. Los locos kick your balls into outer space. This story comes from Futurism. Catholic group defrocks AI priest after it gave strange answers. I feel like I got to read this story. Tom, I think so, so too. Odd. And, and uh, when I first saw this, I saw it in three places and I was like, this is fake, right? Like, this is fake, right? I thought this was, I, I literally fake, thought right? you should have put this on our funny show. And I think, because and I, I thought it was I fake. I think when they say, when they say defrocked, like they're not, it's not, de they're, they're using that as an adjective to say they, they shut it down. Right. Well, they, they, and they, they kind of just morphed it. All right. Yeah. So the Catholic advocacy group, Catholic Answers, released an AI priest <laughs> called Father Justin earlier this week, but quickly defrocked the chat bot after it repeatedly claimed it was a real member of the clergy. I love that it fucking, it's self, it's fucking Skynet of clergy. <laughs> Jesus. It became self aware. It did. This is so, this shit is dun, so dun, weird. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys also like, if you're not, if you're just listening, go to the show notes and click on this story because the weird avatar that they created, I'm not saying that like fucking father, Justin, the AI chatbot diddles kids, but I am saying that the AI chatbot, father, Justin, at the very least diddles younger chatbots. At the very least, it has spent some time on the dark web. I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> fucking weird, man. Yeah. It's just weird. This is something oh, else. Weird. Earlier in the week, Futurism engaged in an exchange with the bot, which really committed to the bit. It claimed it was a real priest, saying it lived in Assisi, Italy, and that from a young age, I felt a strong calling to the priesthood. On Twitter, a user even posted a thread comprised of screenshots in which the godly chatbot appeared to take their confession and then offer them a sacrament. Our exchanges with Father Justin were touch and go because the chatbot only took questions via microphone and it often misunderstood them, such as a query about Israel and Palestine, to which it puzzlingly asserted that it was real. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my friend, Father Justin responded, I am as real as the faith we share. <laughs> I love when the chatbots insist upon their reality. Oh, and I love too that it's not real and neither is the faith. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's as real as the faith we share. Like, yes, it is. I, I think that thing's being a little too true. On the nose. Can it's we right unplug it? <laughs> it's on the nose. Can we unplug it? I think, <laughs> I think at a certain point, you're going to see fucking Father Justin's hand in like a fucking, the, in the Terminator thing, like Sarah Connor's going to have it. It's Father Justin's hand in a bag. They're trying to leave a, a fucking, I don't know, Skynet. Jesus Christ. It's terrible. Like this is, here's the thing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are a society. <laughs> are we though? <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> let me do that I'm again. Let me, let me do it again. Let me do it again. We are a society. There we go. <laughs> I did air quotes for the people right. listening. We did, okay. I did air quotes. Yeah. We're a society that needs connection with each other. We yeah. need this connection. But we made a thing. Like we made an app for it. Like we made yeah, an app for connection. How, yeah. And 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 here's the thing. There's plenty of like real clergy. Why is this even a thing? Like I I can't figure out why it's a thing. Because here's here's what I, what what people need to understand about the Catholic Church and other churches is they are dwindling. They are yeah. shrinking. They are they are they can't pull in people who want to lead them anymore. They are losing week by week losing parishioners their money that they were making is no longer the money that they used to make right so right. they're they're constantly shrinking the pool is, is shrinking every week so if anybody really needs anything there are people there because those people aren't doing anything anymore yeah, yeah. but like i want to return to the first thing you said because it is i think it's the weirdest thing about these kinds of use cases for ai we should not be automating into robots our human need to connect with other humans. That's fucking, but that's not the point. Yeah. Right? That's weird. That's wrong. It's not good. We shouldn't do it. I, because I can't say it more unequivocally. W w like, if I have a need to connect with another human being and you're like, I've got a chat bot for that, how does that feed me yeah. emotionally and psychologically in the ways that that reach out for connection is designed to be fed? That I, need is not being met. And I, if it is being met, it's being met wrong. I have seen many, many different commentaries and memes about this. And I think they're all hit it on the head when they say, we are automating the wrong things. Yes. The right things to automate are grunt labor. We should be creating as much AI to handle as much grunt labor as possible. We should not be creating AI to be taking away art from human beings. Thank you, to yes. Let, letting human beings create art. We should be encouraging, instead, we should be encouraging AIs to come up with better systems and control things that are like hard, difficult labor. Like if they were to take and turn the entire Amazon warehouse into an AI thing, right? And there's no humans that work there. It's all whatever. And it just like you order something and then a, a robot takes the order, a robot picks the order, a robot packs the order, a robot sends the order, whatever. They pay a shit ton of taxes. So we all get UBI. Right. And so you don't have to work, right? And you can do UBI and we live in the Jetsons. Right. And that's cool. <laughs> but don't take an entire journalistic staff and an entire 
you know, writing staff for, say, The Onion or something and sack them and replace them with AI because that's the wrong use of it. That's the bad yeah. use of it. I got to return to the rest of this thing because there's some parts of it that are really hilarious. Father Justin was also a hardliner on social sexual issues. The Catholic Church had told us teaches that masturbation is a grave moral disorder. The AI priest, which is so funny because like AI is so much about masturbation. <laughs> The AI, this is my favorite part. The AI priest also told one user that it was okay to baptize a baby in Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> and my question to you is, what flavor? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you definitely want it to look a little like water. So cool frost would be there my choice. Go. That would be my choice to be like, yeah, let's do that frost one because that kind of looks like milky water. And then and nobody wants it. to drink it. And nobody wants to drink it. <laughs> Do you think that cum fucking looking water? Do you think if you if you set a baby on there, they'd float? <laughs> There's so much sugar in that water that it's like the Red Sea or whatever. That the baby's just like it's stuck there, like, like it's a in a fucking sensory. It's like tank. a sensory deprivation tank. It's just sitting there, like what the fuck is happening? I feel cold and wet, but yet I won't sink, and I don't know why it's doing this. Here's your sticky baby back. <laughs> You like never you, they like go to hand back. it they go to hand it to you and they can't you can't get it out of their hands because it's, it's like stuck, stuck to them to their hand yeah it's like a fucking glue if you ever get your kid back from a priest and it's sticky oh, call the police let me just tell, immediately it's call covered the with that frost stuff too. <laughs> so I am confusion why is this one Kansas but this one is not Arkansas America explain. Explain, what do you mean in Arkansas? This story comes from the New York Times. This is a headline just to read out loud and say, this is the times we're in right now. Trump wants to prosecute Biden. He also, think, he also thinks presidents deserve immunity. <laughs> it's so great. What the fuck is even happening, man? But it's so true, right? What a, what a great way to put this because it's such a true statement, right? Yes. Is that is that throughout Trump's recent campaign, what he has been claiming over and over and over again is that he is going to weaponize the DOJ and his son has been saying the same thing. As soon as we get in office, it's our turn to make them pay. That's basically been exactly what they've been saying this entire time. But if this particular immunity case goes in Trump's favor yes. where suddenly that you're immune as a president or at least most of your actions are immune especially actions that you undertake while in office to maintain the office and this would i think arguably fall under that then there's nothing he could do to that there's nothing that you could do to Biden cuz that would fall all fall under things that he was doing while in office as a public act so it wouldn't make any sense in, in this other podcast I do, this other podcast called Lawful Assembly, it's another podcast I do with a friend of mine, Craig, who's a lawyer. We actually, this upcoming week, it's going to release tomorrow, so this will be the last episode for people who are hearing this because it releases tomorrow, But um, and this releases after that. But in any case, we listen to those the tape of the, of the oral arguments that are happening at the Supreme Court for his immunity case, and then we talk about what we heard. So we, I cut it down, I, I edited it down in about... 10 clips. Mm -hmm. And then we listen to those 10 clips. And one of the things that Craig brings up on that show, which I thought was so great is they keep on saying it's the deep state. The deep state's the problem. Deep state's the problem. It's like when you create an immune presidency and you create an immune admi administration, you're creating a deep state. Fuck like, yeah. That's yeah. one thing that you're not, like you don't understand. And it's something that, that needs to be said is they don't want this. They only want it for their side. Yes. Yes. You know, what, what Trump is saying here is intentionally two mutually exclusive things. And he does this a lot, where he says two things that are mutually exclusive, and that way, no matter how things shake out, he's got an angle that he was already saying that he gets to play forward for. That's an interesting point. He does this a lot. He also, like, I take issue a little bit with this part of the, of the headline. He also thinks... Presidents deserve immunity. I don't believe that that's true. I think he wants immunity. I don't think that he thinks presidents deserve immunity. I think that's an important I distinction. Think, I think that's a lie. 
I think everything that Trump does and everything that Trump says is a tactic for him to consolidate power. It is never a series of principles that he holds dear. So it's not that he has some principled stance where he thinks that presidents legally or morally or, you know, uh, strategically should have immunity. I don't think he thinks that at all. I think he wants immunity. And I also think that if he doesn't get it, saying at the same time, let's prosecute Biden, lets him win in two directions. So he just has to pull back on whichever way, whichever way he lost and just commit to the other to the other direction. He does this constantly, constantly. I think that's a great point. I think you're absolutely hit the nail on the head that he's not looking for precedent. He doesn't no. care what legal precedent has to say about whether or not a sitting president has a public act or a private act. All he did was look at lawyers and say, make it so I don't get in trouble. 100%. What I want is, I don't want to get in trouble for any of this, and I want to make sure that in the future, I never see anything. So I don't care if you have to bring in all the other presidents to this immunity dance. Right. That doesn't matter to me. No. What matters is my immunity. Yep. If I'm immune, I don't give a fuck about the rest of it. Because this is a guy who is also approaching the end of his life. Yeah. He's only got to run out the clock for another 15 or 20 years. Yeah. If that. Right? I mean, tops, yeah. right? Tops. He's, so if I'm looking at the back 15 or 20 years of my life and I'm thinking, all I need to do now is consolidate enough power to keep me safe so that I can go be rich yeah. and do whatever the fuck I want for the last you know dozen and a half years that I might have left in the tank, I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that if I have no morals or principles. Right. Our abort recommendation was ignored, triggering violent retaliations against American citizens with no predictable end. Regime change is the only solution. Some good news, Cecil, from the New York Times. Arizona lawmakers repeal an 1864 abortion ban, creating rift on the right. So what's crazy about this is a couple of things. The first is that only two Republicans came over mm -hmm. in order to make this happen. This, this, this fucking 1864 law uh, is the worst, I mean, most egregious. There's no exceptions in this law for rape or incest. And there were only two people, two Republicans who are willing to say like, hey, even if you were like a horrible fucking pro-life person, most pro-life people would still be like, all right, we want a different pro-life law. This is too much. And it's not like there's nothing behind it, right? There's no baffle behind it. There's already a law in place that's yeah. a 15-week ban. That's right. right. So after 15 weeks, you can't get abortion there anyway, right. right? And there's already an existing law on the books that they've already worked on and passed. They are relying now on a total abortion ban from 1864. We talked about this a couple weeks ago about how this was put in place to stifle midwives right. from entering into the workforce and helping you know, pregnant women get their period back, right? right. And so they they came up and said, no, we're, we are male doctors who are interested in stifling this, this profession. Industry, yeah. That we're making this, this profession our own, and we're going to take the ability to enter this profession from anyone else who isn't us, right? Who isn't a, right. Who isn't a white guy. We, the rest of the people don't get an opportunity to get into this field. And so that's what that law was there and what was created for. And so- now they're saying we need to go back to that law. And then there's, and then, and this is what the Supreme Court, four to two or something, came back and said, this is what, this is how it's going to be. We're going to actually abide by this pre state. We were a territory at the time. That's we're still going to abide by this. And then modern day, their modern day Senate or Congress gets together and still only two people come over. This was a close vote, folks. This wasn't How insane like, is it this? was only over by mm -hmm. like one vote or something because two people had to come over and two Republicans. The rest of them were all just like, yep, 1864 sounds good to me. That's anyway, the world I want to live in. Da -dun 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 -dun. Fucking hell. I also, I want to correct myself. I used the wrong phrase. This, I think this is important. I said pro-life. I never say pro-life. I just had a little bit of a brain fart. I think that's an important thing never to say. It's anti-choice. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I said pro-life. I heard myself say it and I was just like, no, what? <laughs> and yeah. I still, it was just like the old shitty part of my brain sure. yeah, yeah. that has internalized that, yeah. like that, that dynamic. Yeah. So, 
But I want to acknowledge that because that's, that's it's, it's inaccurate. Yeah. It's inaccurate. The other thing is, is that <clears throat> when they were arguing for these things, they're all arguing a rhetorical point. Like one guy's holding up his son's sonogram or something and saying, this is, we're never going to see babies again, essentially, yeah, what, or what whatever. What zero-sum world are and, they trying and, and to imagine? You're living in a, in a state with a 15-week abortion ban, man. 15 weeks. There's a chance you might not even know at that point. There's a, you know, yeah. that's, 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 a, that's a short amount of time for a pregnancy, and the pregnancy is so small at 15 weeks. Nobody's showing at 15 weeks. No. And, like, the, the other thing is it's not like you show up and say, I want an abortion. They say, oh, great, come on back. We'll give you one right now. You have to make appointments for these yeah. things. These are doctors' offices. These are abortion clinics. You have to get an appointment. It takes a week or two from the time you decide you want an abortion to the actual yeah. procedure. So if you show up on week 14, you might be in that window. But if they can't squeeze you in by the time you're at 15 weeks one day, you're not getting you're going an abortion to California. in Arizona. Yeah, you're going to yeah. California. The other thing, too, is like... Also consider that some of these people don't come in knowing what they're going to do. So they have a consultation appointment ahead right. of time. Now add another couple weeks to that. Now you're looking at two weeks out of plus. I mean, this is- It's a fucking mess. It's a, it's a mess. And I think that we're going to be leaning back on Roe v. Wade and thinking about the way in which they set it up and the restrictions and the, um, you know, not, not just the restrictions, but, but the what it allowed. Yeah. What it allowed as well- you're gonna be looking at that and saying that was a good way to do it. That was it that was, was a, a solid, way smart way to do it, and that allowed abortion access for everybody, and it allowed for very you know draconian laws at, after a certain point in certain places in our country where there wasn't a chance for somebody to have an abortion after a certain point in certain places in this country, and it allowed people to um to to I think in some ways bridge that gap between the anti-choicers and the people who were pro-choice. I think it, there was a way to bridge that gap. And we're going to be looking back on that for a long time as like, that was pretty good law for- it was great law. 40 but, years. And like, to compare that to the fucking patchwork of restricted access that we're building. I mean, yeah. Florida this week- Oh yeah. Just passed a six-week abortion ban in Florida. It, I mean, there are parts of this country- where if you end up, you know, needing reproductive care, you could be a seven, eight, 10 hour drive from a place where you can get reproductive care. There, I, I think the Supreme Court heard an argument this week, if I, it was this week, um, about access to care in Idaho. Two weeks ago, yeah. Was this two weeks yeah. ago? And, and, the, um, uh, and the conflict between the uh, anti-abortion laws in Idaho and the federal law that requires emergency rooms to provide us with care. I listened to a story, like they were talking about how some people in Idaho were having to be airlifted out of Idaho to get access to the care that they needed. And they were like, oh yeah, that's the solution that we came up with, was to airlift them out of the state. And that way they still get access to the care. And you're like, well, what if every state, it's like the Kant thing, right? Like imagine if everybody behaved this way. If everybody behaved this way, there'd be nowhere for people to be airlifted to. You can't say that's a solution. Like a, like a moral law can only be just if everybody acting on that moral law is still creates a moral outcome, right? Like if everybody did what Idaho's doing, there'd be no state to airlift those people to. But Idaho's genuinely standing in front of the Supreme Court being like, well, yeah, I mean, like she needed care and we're, you know, the EMTLA or whatever it's called means that we have to transfer them someplace that can give them the care. So we just put them in a helicopter and airlift them out of state. And you're like, how the fuck are we living in that world yeah. how is where that we're taking solution? pregnant people and airlifting them into other states when they're already in a hospital? Well, they're that, already in an emergency room. And I think that also shows you too, the more pregnant people you have that are in these states, the more chance it gives the insurance companies that handle those people chances to get out of coverage, right? right. So if I have to leave the state for something, yeah. there's a possibility they may deny me coverage because I'm out of network or something. Oh my what God. What if I have to fly a helicopter? You know, I'm a pregnant person, I got to get into a helicopter and I got to fly somewhere. Right. And then they suddenly deny the bill. And what if you don't even know how to fly the helicopter? <laughs> 
<laughs> but seriously, I mean, dead yeah, serious. No, I know. What if we you covered, don't? What if I'm not yeah. covered for that? That's a seventy thousand dollar bill. Yeah, remember who we, the fuck yeah. can cover a seventy thousand dollar bill? Yeah, right. Guys, there's fucking people get a fucking in a, get an ambulance. They can't even cover the thousand dollar bill. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is. We're we're living in a country where I think I read not that long ago. Many people in this country, like a giant number of people in this country, are four or five hundred dollars away on an unexpected bill. Four or five hundred dollars away you're, from being destitute. You're on the hook for a sixty or seventy thousand dollar airlift bill. Nobody pays it. Nobody pays it. Nobody, Nobody pays, pays it. it. I couldn't pay a well, seventy thousand well, dollar bill. No, you don't pay well, it. I wouldn't but pay the, it. Well, sure, but then you go into medical bankruptcy. Though. I know. Like your fucking life is ruined. Yeah. Now you can't. Now you can't get a credit card. Now you can't. Now fucking, I can't. Get, I'm, I'm paying forty four percent on a car loan. You can't even get a house in right. some places, or I'm not even a house. You can't even rent. Yeah. Because if my credit comes back bad and they say, well, you got to. I'm sorry, you've got a, you've got a bankruptcy yeah, on your, you've got a medical bankruptcy. I can't trust you to, to rent well, this house to you. And that's the other thing, is that a bankruptcy is a bankruptcy. It's not, it doesn't show up on as a medical bankruptcy. Yeah. It's just- They don't that, give a shit. Yeah, no, yeah. there's no so, special provision so for So you're going to get turned down from that. You, you might get turned down from jobs even. Right. Like there's a, that could totally ruin your life because they decided that in their state, they're just not going to handle that. And so they're going to send you to another goddamn state and you can fucking ruin your life outside of the fact that they already tried to ruin your life by having you stay in a state and die. Yeah, and you start off in Idaho. Yeah, it's not like you're... <laughs> it's not like things are looking rosy. Yeah, my suggestion to anybody would be to jump. <laughs> just jump. The moment you get over the state line, just do your best just, to jump and, that's and run. Just run. Like it's the running man. Just, just <laughs> as, soon as, the, as soon as the gates open, just run. Why don't you punch me in the face? Punch me in the fucking face. So this story comes from the Friendly Atheist blog. Christian lawmaker says teachers should be allowed to hit students with disabilities. Oh, let's listen to him say it, Tom. I think that that's the most important part here. Fuck. Here we go. This is this is straight from the, the lawmaker floor, wherever they're at. Where did he say? Where'd you say it was from? Uh, Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. So this is straight from the Oklahoma floor where they're all sitting around desks like they're in school. <laughs> Effectively, we're taking a tool that has been in the hands of parents and the belt. in the hands of schools to maintain discipline. And we're removing it from the parents' prerogative and saying, we, big brother, the state of Oklahoma, knows what's best for your child. And we're removing an entire motivational tool from discipline in the classroom. And this is an erosive and a corrosive element in the United States whenever Dr. Benjamin Spock published a book that said, don't discipline your children, don't spank your children. And a lot of people don't know that his voice was elevated because it fit a particular agenda. Dr. Benjamin Spock was a socialist who ran for the oh People's my Party. God. That means he's a communist. You guys, here's what's the best thing. I already cited right Proverbs 13, 24. Whoever spares the rod hates the... Somebody stood up and walked out. Most people are not looking up from their desk. They're not even paying attention to yeah, this guy. They don't Like, care. all around this fucking chucklehead are people busily ignoring him. As it's quickly amazing. as they can. As, as quickly as, as they it's can. Like, it's like when you see some, like, a couple, like, having a fucking whisper <laughs> fight. And you're like trying to like find yeah. something else to look at and like to do. Very interested in the appetizers at uh -huh. Applebee's yep. at that point. I can get an appetizer and a dessert for $10. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't go out to Applebee's enough. <laughs> I will also get a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have I played this loud and distracting thing on my phone for you lately? <laughs> uh. Loves them disciplines them. And we're saying the state of Oklahoma has unilaterally decided if, if you have vision impairment, you cannot be disciplined, even if your parents want that. We're going to unilaterally take that away from our schools and our parents, more importantly. If you, have, if you are hearing impaired, suddenly you're in a different class, you cannot be disciplined. And we've already made it abundantly clear that children can mis misbehave regardless of their abilities or inabilities, capabilities or incapabilities. Are we sending a message that we don't love our children? At the end of the day, you're looking at socialist slash communist principles versus biblical principles, Jewish culture, Christian culture, 
And any common sense culture understands that if you don't discipline children or you create a class of children that cannot be disciplined, those discipline problems are going to cascade through the rest of society. And we're seeing that now from Dr. Spock telling Christian parents, don't spank your children. And they follow Dr. Spock instead of the Bible. Dr. Spock was a communist who ran for president with the Communist Party. This is communist ideology. I urge you to vote against this bill. It is bad public policy. Do you, when did we, as a culture, you think, really stop hitting kids normally, like mostly? Because as I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was a young boy, hitting kids was the norm. That yeah. was a normal thing to do. If you were to see somebody that would get, they'd get spanked, like a little kid would get spanked by their parents in public, that would happen all the sure. time. My parents did it to me in public, no problem. They'd give me a whack on the ass all the time. By the time I was a young adult, it was vilified and not a thing you do. Yeah. It took about 20 years of my life. Yeah. But at that, in that time, there was a huge swing yeah. That went from one way to the other. Yeah, I don't know exactly when that happened. I would also suggest that, that that swing that we saw might be geographical because there are big parts of this country where I don't think that shift has taken place. I, it, and that could be. I, I only know around here. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I, I feel intuitively like from the number of states that still have corporal punishment laws on their books um, and just from like a general zeitgeist kind of pulse taking – that there are still parts of this country where swatting your kids, beating your kids, spanking your kids is still considered part of regular discipline. That could be. I I, I could be dead wrong about it, but that's I I feel like that's sure. the case in like the more Bible belt. I don't parts I don't think that that would be a pro I, I think that probably is true. I will say like I'm raising four kids, never hit any of them, mm -hmm. would never dream it, and they're well behaved kids. Sure, like you don't like it, it's such a like. It's such a stupid person's way to solve problems. It's like that fucking Christy Gnome. It's like such a stupid person's way to solve a problem when we know better. Yeah. I don't blame my dad or my dad's generation or previous generations because they didn't know better. Sure. But what we have now is a ton of research, just an absolute ton of research that spanking is ineffective. It's bad. It yields negative outcomes. It does not accomplish the things as parents we want it to do. And there are better ways to get your kids to understand, you know, natural consequences for their actions so that they're well-behaved, but you didn't have to whack the shit out of them. Sure. And it makes me crazy that, like, we don't do this to anybody else. So, like, I can't go to work and discipline an employee by spanking them. I can't hit somebody at the grocery store because I got mad that they didn't bag my groceries the way I wanted them to do it. The only people it's that like you can hit yeah. are your kids. Yeah. And it's and like your own kids. It's not like, yeah. it's not like we share this burden. Like I can't, I don't come over to your house and like your kids acting up and I don't whack them in the head. That's not an acceptable thing for people to it's, do either. It's not, but in schools, in some parts it's of the weird country, that that's you the can. Case. Yeah. That, that like kids can be on the corporal punishment. You can whack the shit out of me or whatever. Like, it's just like, here's these, here's like the people in the world who should be hit the least. They're the most defenseless. They're the most trusting. And they're the most malleable people, versions of people in the world. They're the least people you should hit. There's lots of grownups we should be hitting right now. I can, I can make a list of all the grownups that I think sure. deserve a good hitting. I can't make a list of any kids where like, you're really going to do what, what, what most often is the case is adults hit kids because they don't know what else to do. Yeah. And the adult has lost their temper. Sure. So the adult has lost the ability to regulate their own emotions and they take it out on a kid. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and now this legislator's like, well, written in the Bible. I will say, and that's one of the things that, you know, if you haven't read our book, the grand unified theory of bullshit, genuinely that part is in the book. We yeah. talk very specifically about a gentleman and his wife who use a, they they tell you to go out and get a piece of a copper tubing, a little, or not copper tubing, like a little piece of rubber tubing that you would use a, on a on a sink 
and and whack your kid with it. Like yeah. they tell you that, you know, that there's a certain size of rod that you should be able to whack your kid with and carry it around with you. They're like, yeah, in your pocket, you should essentially have like a, like a small kid blackjack to right. whack yeah. your kid with. <laughs> That's what they're telling you yeah. to carry around. Yeah. So there's, there's people out there who... They adhere to that by biblical principle. And this is a horror, right? This is a genuine yes. horror that this isn't just one person out there. This is one person who's spreading a message of abuse. That's essentially what their message is. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize, and I really think you, you're onto something when you say like, this is a ton of people who have no idea what they're doing. And then they're choosing the absolutely square peg round hole way to fix it. Yeah. Because they don't know what to do. They're at their at wit's end and they're frustrated. So instead of trying to to do the thing which which would turn the kid into something else, which would be a teaching moment to teach the kid on how to be better, right? Yeah. Spending the time, because it's not, like being a parent isn't easy. Being a parent isn't just, well, I guess right. I just take care of this kid and that's all there is to, you gotta teach that kid a lot of things. And it's a lot, it's a time consuming, long process to teach the child how to be a good human. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And the fact is, is that if you neglect that, for hitting them when they do something wrong. One, you're not telling them what, to, you're only telling them what not to do. You're not telling them what to do. And you're not reinforcing the lesson at all, except for just like, essentially, that you're, it's a shock watch. You're, right, you're basically yeah. a human shock, shock watch, watch for yeah. your kid <laughs> to beat the shit out of them every once in a while when they get out of line. But it's really also, like you said, think about all the times in your life when you get frustrated and then, like, if I was frustrated hanging a piece of drywall, and then I just get mad and broke it. Yeah. Like, that didn't solve anything. All you did was have a tantrum. All you did was just have a tantrum. And now, the thing that you are trying to fix is now broken. And that's very similar with what's going to happen with a child's psyche. You've got to work with that child and be gentle at that point and help them understand what they did wrong instead of breaking them. Yeah. It's just it's super easy. I mean, I'm not even a parent, and it's know, easy man. for me to see. It's not. That's the thing. It's like... It is complicated because it takes a lot of time yeah. and it's hard work. And like we talked about before, it's like training a dog, right? Like yeah. you don't get a dog and start smacking the dog every time it does something wrong. Like everybody who's ever trained a dog successfully will tell you, like you train through positive reinforcement only. It does something you like, click something, give it a treat, you know, whatever your tra training method of choice is, it's always positive reinforcement. All the research for dogs is basically similar to people. We respond better to positive reinforcement to we move toward rather than, than away from yeah, things. Yeah. It's like, we've known these principles now for a long time. So these people who are fighting against it, they are fighting against it based on a traditionalism, not based on any kind of research, no. any kind of empathy, any kind of honestly 21st century common sense. This is rooted in a sort of traditionalism that we know better than. Sure. And I don't think we should judge people who use the tools in the past that they had. Sure. I don't do that. But like, I do think that now we have new tools. We have new information. We have new research. That stuff is real easy to come by. So now I am judging about parents that smack their kids. Sure. Like for fucking sure. It's wrong. Yeah. And now you get to know it's wrong. And now once you know it's wrong, we have an obligation to act better. Absolutely. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. We are going to be back on Thursday with a funny show. So come check us out on Thursday, this upcoming Thursday, a release. And then we'll be back on Monday next week. Uh, this show should be on YouTube. So <sighs> welcome back to YouTube, folks. YouTube! Um, uh, we'll be posting some shorts on here soon. And uh, I have no idea what's going to happen to the Skeptic's Creed, but I'm going to keep saying it the same way I've been saying it forever. <laughs> but I have no idea. YouTube changes. YouTube will be different. So it might not even be on YouTube, but I am going to say it anyway. We're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy healing, water downward spiral, brain dead pan sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death in towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, 
abductees, nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your sides. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.